why do we have anxiety disorders? Now, this is a big can of worms to open. Why? Because we actually don't know. Ting. So I'm just going to break it down into categories that I think of when I think about what causes anxiety disorders. First one that I want to think about is called brain stuff. The first area that we think about with regards to anxiety disorders is you probably heard of it a lot, amygdala. And these are cute two almond-sized centers in the middle of your brain. So they're pretty small, but they pack a big punch. So their job is to control fear. The other guy that's super important is the hippocampus. To me, I kind of remember hippocampus as like two skinny shrimp near the middle of your brain. They noticed through research that the amygdala and the hippocampus together control something called the behavioral inhibition system. What they noticed was that people who had a larger volume of hippocampus matter actually had more anxiety. So somehow the amygdala and the hippocampus together, based on their size, perhaps their structure, equals whether you have anxiety or not. The next section that I think about with regards to anxiety is neurotransmitters. Watch this, I can draw a super straight line. <laughs> so neurotransmitters, I think of three. The first one I think of is serotonin. And if you don't have much knowledge about neurotransmitters, just think of it like messengers in the brain. They carry message messages around the brain. And these three messengers, serotonin, GABA, and noradrenaline, are the three that I usually think about with regards to anxiety. So serotonin, first one, is like your feel-good hormone. It makes you feel really happy, good sense of well-being. If we stimulate this, then we're going to have... Uh, no anxiety or less right and the other thing is you would think that if you turn this off you would have anxiety but the complicating thing is that with certain drugs we've noticed that turning this off can actually also have no anxiety so serotonin quite frankly is a bit complicated it's not as straightforward as we'd like to think sorry guys now the drugs I want you to think about that we use to treat anxiety that targets these pathways. So for serotonin, turning it on. Family of drugs, can anyone guess? You got it, SSRIs. These SSRIs just increase serotonin in the synaptic cleft. The other drug that does the opposite of this is buspirone. Overall, they decrease serotonin neurotransmission. So they decrease the messages that are carried by serotonin. So essentially, GABA is an inhibitory, inhibitory neurotransmitter. So that means it inhibits messages in the brain. So if you think about it, if you increase GABA, then you're gonna have low anxiety. And that's true. The drug that we use to treat anxiety that targets this pathway is, can anyone guess? Hopefully you guessed, benzodiazepines. And I'm going to abbreviate that as benzos because how people say it. So benzodiazepines actually increase the GABA receptor affinity. The last one is noradrenaline. I kind of want to think of noradrenaline as like your stress hormone. Okay, so if you think it as stress, what that means is if you stimulate noradrenaline messages, you're going to get more anxiety. Right? So if you turn off or decrease these noradrenaline messages, then you're going to have no anxiety, which makes sense. Ah, my why. So the medication that we use to treat this is TCAs, or tricyclic antidepressants. It's a family of drugs that is also used to treat depression. So TCAs, 
they decrease the reuptake of noradrenaline. The other group I want to talk about is genetic stuff. So, genetic stuff. Some of the anxiety disorders like social phobia or specific phobia, these disorders are moderately heritable. Panic disorder have a lot more research that supports that there is a stronger genetic component. They've isolated that there's a gene called the COMT gene. So yeah, so there is some research showing that, you know what, anxiety disorders do have a genetic component. But the fact that there is also an environmental side you need to consider is very important. Talk about environmental stuff now. Do you have a lot of negative life events? Was there separation when you were a kid? Was there role inversion? Meaning, even as a kid, you had to act more like an adult. Maybe even act more like a parent to your parents. Did you have a lack of social interactions? Maybe you've seen a relative model negative coping strategies. You can probably guess what the other bit we're going to talk about is, and that's cognitive behavioral stuff. A lot of anxiety disorders are learned. When something happens to you and you respond a certain way, your brain remembers that pathway. So in the future, you're conditioned to that. Every time an event similar to that negative event happens, you're going to react a certain way. So you have a certain stressor and you react a certain way. And sometimes this reaction might not be the best way to react to this stressor. But because it's a learned behavior and you've done this pairing so many times, your brain struggles to break out of this pattern. People with anxiety disorders might just have an overestimation of danger. So their brain somehow has learned, oops, <laughs> of brain. This is what happens when you try to write and talk at the same time. <laughs> overestimation of danger. So their brain has learned to I guess freak out more than it needs to. So when something bad happens, they think to think of the worst case scenario. I definitely know a lot of people in my life who do that. And so when you do that to an extreme level, that's when it becomes an anxiety disorder. Just to summarize for you, to help you kind of make sense of all this. So we talked about there being a genetic component, a cognitive behavioral, and then there's the neuro stuff. So those three components paired up with environmental stuff. So what happens to you in your life? So all this stuff that happens to you creates stress. Based on your genetic makeup, all of the learned behaviors and how you predict danger, and all of the potentially maybe non-genetic stuff that is biological, that is in your body, is going to affect how resilient you are. So I think of resiliency interacting with stress will decide whether you're going to have anxiety disorders or not. So there is a lot to consider, clearly. And the last bit that I want to add in here, are there other medical conditions or drugs that can create a similar picture to anxiety disorders or even aggravate someone with anxiety disorders. And that is it. Thank you guys.